courtesy to performers and audience. Please silence all cell phones and other electronic devices. Thank you and enjoy the program. Welcome, everybody. My name is Orly. I'll be your pianist for the evening. Uh, and today we have several specials. We have a little Janacek, some Reich, some foray for dessert. Uh, I've had an incredible time here at Colburn over the last four days. It's hard to believe it's only been four days. Uh, I've gotten to hear students perform. I've gotten to work with students in a master class. I've gotten to uh, go out to the schools and play for about 500 K through 5 kids. Uh, and I, it, it's just, I found the experience so inspiring, so wonderful, working with these incredible musicians who have such energy and such focus on music. Um, it's really a good thing to do. It's good for your soul. Uh, and one thing in particular that blew me away today, I don't know if you've had a chance to look at your programs, but the program notes are excellent. They're some of the best program notes I've ever seen, and they were written by students. So, yeah. But just in case maybe you haven't had a chance to read the program notes yet, uh, I'll tell you a little bit about the Janáček. So we're going to start with a piece that is sort of known, but really should be much more known. Janáček was uh, an incredible composer who lived a very long life, and was quite productive towards the end of it as a composer, although he was composing and collecting material for composition throughout. Uh, he wrote this piece in 1925. And before that, in his life, the things that he was fascinated by, living in the sort of Czech Moravian area, was language and the way that language actually worked like music both in its meter and in the way the pitches work. And if you've ever been in that part of the world, you know that it's a very sing-songy kind of language. So it's not surprising that he would have been really fascinated by that in that part of the world. Uh, he was also really interested in folk music, and he collected a lot of folk songs and tried to put them all together. And um, by the time you get to this piece, he had really perfected a voice that was uniquely his, but that was very much based on all these things. He was also fascinated, as so many composers have been ever since, by Beethoven. Beethoven looms as a giant shadow for everybody who followed. There's a reason we're all going crazy for his 250th. Um, and the th one of the things that he took from Beethoven especially is his use of motives, the idea that you take a short rhythmic cell and you keep at it, you move it around, you turn it to different instruments, you give it different dynamics, but you take that cell over and over and over again, and that is how you build a piece, um, very much how Janáček worked. And then one other aspect of his music is that he was not really beholden to standard meter or standard harmony. So it's not necessarily major or minor, it's often modal. There's a lot of interesting notes that he puts in. And it's very rare that you go any length of time without a bar that is not in a different meter than everything that's come before it. So he was not afraid to have a bar marked 10-4, which at that time was pretty audacious. Um, I think these, these are sort of the big things about his writing that might help you. But another thing that will help you as you listen to this piece, a few years before he wrote this, Janáček was quite famous for being an operatic composer. And a few years before this piece, he had a huge success with an opera called Katya Kabanova. Uh, and he also had this little opera called The Cunning Little Vixen. And The Cunning Little Vixen, which is the one I actually wanted to talk about, um, is a fairy tale. The Cunning Little Vixen is filled with animals. All of the characters are like something out of a children's book. And they sing in this very Janáčekian style, um, the same way that you would imagine uh, as a four or a five-year-old somebody singing. The reason that that huge success, I think, impacts on this piece is because it turns out that there was a program for this concertino. 
Uh, he, as many composers do, he pulled that program away when he published the piece, but then he gave it away. Uh, he wrote about it a few years later. And you're gonna hear four movements that follow each other in, in pretty quick succession. The first movement, which is just for horn and piano, uh, is called the Grumpy Hedgehog. <laughs> and it sounds like one. <laughs> and the second movement, which is mostly just for clarinet and piano, uh, is called the Fidgety Squirrel. It always reminds me of, I don't know if you've seen that movie, Hoodwinked? There's a little squirrel there who says, I drink chai lattes. <laughs> it reminds me of that. <laughs> The third movement, where the entire ensemble comes in, is uh, about the night owl and other animals. And it's in this movement where you actually hear the folk music coming in and a lullaby coming in, which is really one of the most beautiful, heartbreaking uh, moments in the, the piece. And then the last movement he talks about is like a fairy tale scene where everyone is arguing. <laughs> And I think it's up to you to decide how our argument ends. So I hope you enjoy our first piece, the Anacex Concertino.
The great American composer Steve Reich has written some remarkable music, and we are so incredibly honored and humbled that he's here with us today to hear this piece of his. Do you remember when I was talking about the Janáček, I talked about little motivic cells? I talked about modes. I talked about meters that kept changing. I talked about music that somehow evolved from speech patterns. You see why these two pieces are on the program now? <laughs> Same ideas done by a completely different person in a completely different time for completely different reasons, I would suspect. And this particular piece, Quartet, um, holds a dear place for me, uh, not only because it's one of the few pieces that I get to actually be part of, um, but because it's so stunningly beautiful. It's a short, compact three-movement work, but it's filled with so much stuff, uh, a lot of exuberance, and it's a very joyful piece. Uh, but it also explores some harmonies that really are new to Steve Reich in this music, and that are so gorgeous and just heartfelt. Uh, the colors in this, the four of us have had just a wonderful time rehearsing it, putting it together because of its sheer pleasure. This is a really fun and beautiful piece, incredibly difficult to play, but so rewarding and so great to listen to. So I hope you enjoy Steve Reich's Quartet.
but he's recovered from that first half. <laughs> yeah, we had a great time. Uh, now a very different type of quartet, but so many connections here. Not only will you hear a lot of the same harmonies and modes in Foray's music, and the same kind of, um, the same kind of approach to meter, which is so fluid that it gets to just go back and forth wherever you happen to need it to go. Um, the same thing with pitches, where Foray has no difficulty going from one key to another because he has a completely different conception of how those keys relate than so many composers who came before him. He really opened the door to a lot of that. Uh, and in this quartet, you'll also hear the way that he uses the instruments many times with little cells, little cannons that go between one from one instrument to the next, between the instruments back and forth. Completely different than the way that Steve Reich used cannons, but very much the same technique, uh, which I think is fascinating. You know, the way, no matter what pieces of music you put together, you're always gonna find connections and each one will always reveal something about the other one that maybe you hadn't seen. It's a little bit like uh, if you're in a museum in a room over at the MoCA, uh, and one piece of artwork is on the wall and another one is on the other side and suddenly they both mean something different because of the other one. So for me, this is the great joy of bringing a live concert. The chances are pretty slim that you're ever gonna hear the Anacha Concertino Reich Quartet and Foray Quartet on a single evening ever again in your lives. <laughs> so relish the experience as we will and thank you so much for coming out tonight.